What is going on, everybody? Sports Expert here, and we are doing our second trade video of the MLB season. And in this video, we are doing the Los Angeles Dodgers. So, first, the Yankees to the Dodgers. We're going to do the two biggest markets first because of the community on YouTube. I mean, there's a huge Yankee community, huge Dodger community, and we've got a decent amount of views on the Yankee video. So, hopefully, we can do the same on the Dodger video. And before we start this video, please hit the subscribe button if you're new to the channel. Turn on the post notification bell for more MLB trade scenarios and content this offseason with predictions, everything, discussions. And yeah, and hit that like button. The like button helps our video in the algorithm, so I'd appreciate it deeply, guys. It would mean a lot to me. And comment on the video. I'd really appreciate you guys. That will help in the algorithm as well. What do you think about these trades? So here we go. The first trade, I have the Dodgers acquiring relief pitcher Josh Hader from the Milwaukee Brewers. And I have the Milwaukee Brewers acquiring catcher and number one prospect on the Dodgers, Diego Cartaya. Second baseman, shortstop Gavin Lux. And outfielder, Andy Pages. So, the Dodgers, Kenley Jansen probably will not be back as he will be a free agent this offseason. They will be looking to make a huge splash in the reliever market and Josh Hader can be a realistic candidate. The Brewers may not want to trade him to the Dodgers just because they're in the National League, but at the same time, maybe they can get some solid value for him, especially prospect-wise, and guys that can be ready sooner than later. So, the Brewers, a team that needs offensive help desperately, they do have Omar Narvaez, but Diego Cartea could be a guy that's a that's there for the future, and he can help now. He can play another position maybe. Maybe you put Narvaez at first. Maybe you put Cartea at catcher. And, yeah, that would be a nice pickup for the Milwaukee. Then you get Gavin Lux, second baseman shortstop. He can play in the outfield as well. Definitely hasn't shown his full potential with the Dodgers, but maybe he can show some of that potential in Milwaukee. And he's a guy that I could see them dealing for Hader. And outfielder Andy Pages, their number five prospect, Pages had a really nice 2021 season in the minors, showed why he that he could potentially be a very productive outfielder in the majors, and guys like Lorenzo Cain aren't going to last forever, so getting a guy like Pages can help. The second trade, I have the Dodgers acquiring second baseman outfielder Whit Merrifield and relief pitcher Scott Barlow. So the Dodgers, they get a second baseman outfielder to replace Chris Taylor, and they get a relief pitcher to go with it as Barlow is a guy that, you know, he could be a setup man, he could be a closer, very dominant reliever. So He was just a hidden gem for the Royals. And I have the Royals acquiring pitcher Ryan Pepiot, outfielder Andy Pages. He's I have him in going into this trade as well. Third baseman Cody Hose and infielder Matt Beatty. I think this would be maximum value for the Royals at this point for the 31-year-old Merrifield. And Barlow, who's get who's around thirty as well. So, or actually, I don't know how old Barlow is. He might be like twenty seven, but definitely would be an interesting deal. I think it's a fair deal for both sides. I like the potential with Pep Yacht. I think he can be a very good pitcher. The Royals have a lot of pitching depth already in the minors, but it couldn't hurt to take another guy. And you know, they probably need another spot. And Ryan Pepbot definitely feels. I'm not even pr sure I pronounce this guy's name, but yeah. And obviously, Page, as we talked about him, Cody Hose had a bit of a down year in the minors this year, but still has a lot of potential he's shown in the past and could be a guy that may be the Royals plug in at third base sooner than later. And Matt Beatty is a player that could plug into the Royals lineup immediately, has shown strides with the Dodgers, and, you know, he can show those same exact strides in Kansas City. Third trade, I have the Dodgers acquiring pitcher Luis Castillo from the Cincinnati Reds. They're probably going to be looking for a star pitcher as Trevor Bauer probably won't be returning anytime soon. And there's guys that they probably don't want to depend on Gonsolin all season long, but they could because they're one of those contenders. You know, they'll probably keep Kers Kershaw and Scherzer. So that gives you Arias, Scherzer, Kershaw, Bueller. And Castillo for your rotation. You have David Price and Tony Gonsolin has depth too. So yeah, I like that. What's going on there for the Dodgers? And I have the Reds acquiring second baseman shortstop Gavin Lux, pitcher Bobby Miller, their number four prospect, their number twelve prospect, shortstop Jacob Amaya, and outfielder Jake Vogel. I believe is around their number twenty four prospect. So obviously we want talked about Lux. They need some infield help. The Reds so. Getting a major league ready player like Lux can help. They could also get Jacob Amaya, a shortstop, a guy that's more unproven. 
to help with that shortstop need. They do have Jose Barrero, but, you know, they can always add some competition. Doesn't hurt. And pitcher Bobby Miller, I really like this pickup here. He's now a top 100 prospect like uh, Pepot, uh, Carte, and Pages are. So Bobby Miller had some nasty stuff in college. And if the Reds can get him in a trade for Castillo, that'd be a W. And outfielder Jake Vogel, third round pick in the 2020 draft. A guy with upside and raw potential just needs to show it. The fourth trade, I have the Dodgers acquiring utility man Jorge Mateo. He was traded to the Padres from the A's. Former top 100 prospect, struggled with the Padres, then went to Baltimore, showed a ton of strides on why he can be a very solid major league hitter there. And if the Dodgers need a utility man, a guy on the bench that can help Jorge Mateo would be a great pickup. And I have the Orioles acquiring outfielder James Outman in cash, cash considerations. Outman is the Dodgers' 28th prospect. He hit about 266 in the minors this season, had a solid season. He's 24 years old. He might be major league ready ne- to start next season, and he'd be a guy that the Orioles can plug in and play right away because of their the, their need for outfield help. As Anthony Santander, he'd, he's a solid outfielder. They have Cedric Mullins. They Still have Mancini who can play the outfield. Mount Castle, I feel like those guys could play in the infield, though. They can put Mancini at first and Mount Castle at third base to take the pressure off of them in the outfield, and you couldn't maybe stick Outman in left. That would actually be solid for Baltimore. And, you know, this is a trade, more of a minor trade, but definitely something that can help the Dodgers. In the fifth and final trade, the big, the big one, I have the Dodgers acquiring first baseman Matt Olson from the Oakland A's, and I have the Oakland A's acquiring first baseman center fielder Cody Bellinger and pitcher Ryan Pepiot. So I have Pepiot going in this trade too, as the Dodgers, you know, Matt Olson, one of the best hitters in baseball last season. He's been one of the better hitters in baseball for three to four seasons now, has a massive amount of power, he can, he's an extra base machine, and the Dodgers would love to have that on their team. They have Max Muncy already at first base, but you know he can go anywhere on, play anywhere on the field. He can play second base. He can definitely be a guy that plays second base if Chris Taylor leaves. And if he does, Matt Olson can be a guy that they could definitely go after. And Cody Bellinger, it seems like the Dodgers are, are not committed to paying him his arbitration salary as they could not tender him, so might as well trade him. But Cody Bellinger is a guy that can definitely show his MVP form again. I think it would be foolish for the Dodgers to get rid of him. But, you know, this it could happen in a scenario like this. A Matt Olsen for Cody Bellinger swap just won't happen. Just because of uh, how many teams, you know, value recency bias at this point. As the pitcher, Ryan Pepiot, number two prospect, top 100. Debt will go to the A's, and this would be a, a fair deal for both sides. Maybe a bit of a W for Oakland, but the Dodgers get their fair share of production, and which they didn't get at all from Cody Bellinger last season. So I pre and with the pitching depth they have, Pep Yacht can be a guy that can conclude if the A's really want him. So I appreciate everyone being here. Sports expert here. Please hit the subscribe button if you're new. Turn on the post notification bell. Hit that like button. Comment what you think about these trades. I'm sports expert here. I'm out, guys. Peace.